Hello everyone, uh, welcome back to the Greg Tech Test Laboratories. My name is Chloe and today we are going to be taking a look at Greg Tech covers. Now there are different covers and I'm not going to cover them all in this video. I'm going to go over the basic ones and the solar panel ones. There are some more advanced uh, covers such as pumps, uh, robotic arms, and conveyors. Um, I will cover each of those in their own separate video. You're probably asking what are covers? Well, Greg Tech Machinery and all the blocks uh, like the machine halls, its pipes, even its item pipes, you know, for fluids and items and all that good stuff, they can all take covers. Now covers are a fancy word for basically upgrades. Think of them as upgrades that go on the machine. Let me um, let me show you here how some work. Basically, eh, let's start with let's start with this macerator over here. I've got a basic macerator right here, and in it, uh, let's just say we want to put in some gold. Okay, it processes the gold, and in on this one, in 20 seconds, we will have some gold nuggets or crushed. I, sh I should say crushed ore. Okay, so after it's done processing that, we all know that um, the gold crushed ore will be here in its output slot. And just so you know, it depends on the macerator that you're using. There are five different ones. Um, some macerators have multiple outputs for different types of byproduct, depending on how fancy it is. See, this one's got three, and this one's got four. The fourth one is the latest one. It's called the Blendomatic. It's still a macerator. It uses all the macerator uh, recipes. The Universal Pulverizer is the other one. Uh, universal Macerator, Advanced Macerator, and is Basic Macerator. Okay, so this one has proce processed my gold ore. Now to get that out, we have a couple different options. Now if I use a wrench, Alright, and I aim on the side, I can turn the output face to the side. I can then set that with a screwdriver, click that, and I can sit there and set it to say input from output side allowed or, or it's forbidden. But by default it's just an output. Now on the internal side of the machine's uh, GUI, there are two buttons here. You probably have seen these before and wondered what the heck are these? It's a good thing that Greg gave us a pop-up tip, huh? <laughs> uh, sarcasm. So here's what they do. The silver one is for fluids and the copper colored or orange one is for items. If this is pressed in, those uh, items are auto ejected out. Now items will auto eject out this output face and I can change that output face around. I can click it up here, I can put it here, I can put it up front. Now it's not showing it because the front of the face is there, but it would work. And I can go there. You can also, you've probably seen me show this off in other videos, you can, if you want to put it to the direct back of the face of this, you could just click on the side and it turns it there. You can also um, click the corners and it'll shove it to the back as well. I want to have it on the side. Okay. Now you can also use a screwdriver on this and you can set it's the output to allow an input as well so it goes back and forth, items going through the same spot. This is very handy for applied energistics and other mods that are very robust in handling items and fluids. Okay, so anyway, I'm just going to leave this on forbidden right now. It doesn't really matter what I want to do. Now I'm going to set a chest here and I'm going to put a piece of ore in there. I know this isn't about covers, but I just want to show you all your options for exporting an item out of the machine. So what this is going to do is, because I've pressed this orange button, the auto eject items button in, it's going to automatically send my um, yields from that ore here into the chest. And there we go. So let's just do that again. I'm going to put, uh, this time I'm going to grind up uh, the crushed ore itself. And when it's done, it'll put it in here. And we should get impure pile of gold dust. And let's watch here. So, um, yep, there's our impure uh, gold dust. All right. 
So that's, uh, that's all well and good, but what are these covers all about? Well, I'm going to go ahead and set this back here to the back, and I'm also going to turn the auto eject feature back off so we can get started. Now, <sighs> covers. They basically give you um, upgrades to the machine. Um, this one right here is our machine controller. Adding this to the side will allow you to control the machine through redstone. So let me go ahead and demonstrate this. It allows you to control the machine using a lever. So let's grab a lever. And I'm going to put a lever on the side there. And now we can control the machine using lever. Now I'm going to stick this on the side and see it's not going. And I know we've got power. I'm going to check the power level just to show you. See, we have full power. So no, it's not that. Now if I click this on, it should go. See? Now notice I turned that back off. It won't matter right now. Once the cycle begins, the machine will run it through its full cycle. And since there's nothing else, it's not going to go. But had I had more of this in there, let's say I stick those in there, it's not going to process these now. Now, if I would go ahead and flip this and leave it on, it would process all those. But I don't want to do that. So I'm going to turn it back off. It's going to finish processing the ore that's in there. And then it's going to leave the rest of these in there. This is very handy when you want to just only process one ore. Um, you know, for setups where you only require so much, you know, increments to be made. I've actually, uh, underneath here, I've hooked all these to this switch and I put the um, machine controller cover underneath the machines. So when I press this, we should see that machine down there. Click on again. Oh, I got to take this one back off for it to do it first. So that's easy. I'm just going to use my crowbar. There you go. <laughs> there it goes. Turn this one off. That's a nice way to do it when you want to, you know, hook all your machines up to one switch or redstone logic, whatever you want to do. But that makes that handy. Okay, so let's take a look at the next one. It's called the activity detector. The activity detector, uh, what it does is it's an upgrade for your machine that allows it to put out a redstone signal upon activity of the machine. I'm going to place one on the side and what, let's define what activity is. Activity means that it is in the process of doing something, that it has, say, an ore inside, and it's grinding it up or mixing, or it's building something, it's doing something. That's what this is for. This cover, too, uh, like the others, uh, can be configured with your Greg Tech screwdriver. So it can be inverted, ready to work, not ready, and normal. So you can experiment and see what those different settings all do for your setups. I'm going to go ahead and um, I've got some more ore in there and I'm going to go ahead and take that out and to demonstrate uh, what this does I'm going to put a, a project red lamp on the side so you can see when it's lighting up I'm just going to use eh, let's use a red one here you can use any size you want I'm going to do this one you could run wires to it whatever you want to do anything so Notice there's nothing on now, but when I hit the switch, which I've conveniently put down here, I'm going to go ahead and pulse it one time. There you go. It's putting out an activity um, a redstone signal that the machine is processing something. And you can see up here the count. This is a 20 second cycle for this particular ore, and it's got a few seconds left. We should see that light go out. There we go. And that's how that works. Okay, now let's take a look at the next one. Um, this would be liquids. I want to look at some of the other ones before I get to that one. Let's look at this one here. Um, this is the energy detector. Okay, just like the um, the um, activity detector. The energy detector allows you to detect when the machine is using electricity or receiving electricity or storing electricity. 
So there's different modes using the screwdriver again. Let's go ahead and configure it. Um, so inverted universal storage, normal electricity storage, and so forth. There's a whole gamut of settings. What I want to put this on right now, let's see, what do I want to do? Let's say, let's, um, let's say I want the lamp to come on only when it's drawing or, or it's receiving electricity. Only when it's receiving electricity. So that would be normal average input, I think. Normal electricity storage now. Um, normal steam. It's got settings for steam in there as well. So if you're using steam. Uh, here it is. Normal average electrical input. That's the one we want. Okay, so notice nothing is on there now. All right, I'm going to go ahead, pulse my thing down here one more time. We should see it when it starts to use electricity. You should see it blinking. See, there we go. It's having to use electricity. Okay. So I'll just go ahead and cut the wire back there. And as that runs down out of power, you'll start to see the battery drain here as well. Um, so we can see it actually taking power. Now if I hook it back up to my system here, you'll see the power of the battery go back up. There we go. I'm filling it back up. And that's how that cover works. Let's go ahead and turn that off. go ahead and take that one off. Let's start getting into some of the other things that it can do. Um, for this, I'm going to have to use, um, you know, different pipes and so forth. Let's go ahead and use the, let's do the last one um, before we get on that, the item detector. Now, the item detector is another redstone output um, cover. It outputs a redstone signal when there's an item inside the machine. Using the screwdriver we can configure it. So we can check to see what slot we want to actually detect an item is in there. Now here's the thing you need to know about Greg Tech. Slot 4 is usually your input slot. Okay, This right here is slot 1. Usually um, that is true. You would think it would be 0. It's not. <laughs> It is actually slot four, usually. So I'm going to go ahead and let me get my lamp again here. And if I want to see if an item is, let's say, I want to see if an item's in that slot. Oop, I don't want that. I want a regular one. Okay, so there's nothing in there. Once I put this in there, we should see something. See? It's lit up. That means the machine's ready to go. Now, <clears throat> let's just say I wanted that slot to light up only when it's empty. So it signify there's nothing in the input slot. Very handy, right? Um, I think to go backwards, you just might have to scroll through them all. Yeah, you do. Yeah, we just got to scroll through them all. I want to go into inverted mode. Okay, and then I'm going to take these out. There we go. And now it shows when there's nothing in the slot at all. That's how the item detector works, and you can play around with that. Now, we need to do something to show off some of these other ones, these other basic ones. There are some, like, um, basically cosmetic covers. Here would be a computer monitor the crafting table. Uh, let's take a look at those two real quick. So yeah, so <laughs> I don't know why you would want to, but you know, you can put a crafting table on the side of your machine if you wanted to, or on top, or anything else you wanted to. Say, I wanted to take this machine and I just didn't want to make a crafting table or I didn't have the room for it, but I had this beautiful machine sitting here and you know, I don't like always having to mix something or run over to my crafting table. Boom. Now I've got a crafting table on top of my Greg Tech device. 
Uh, does that work actually on wires? I don't know if it does or not. <laughs> it does. Wow. And you can looks like you can put it in, uh, <laughs> in the wrong way too. Nice. Okay, so let me see if that actually goes on the side. Yeah, it does. Yep. So you can put it on your wires, your pipes. Fantastic. Just what you need, right? On your wires, a crafting table. <laughs> and the computer monitor one, it's just for looks. It's just to make things look awesome. It does, it's one of the few covers that actually fits over the face of your your macerators and other stuff if you don't like like the actual standard cover you can change them but that's all that does right now it's just cosmetic i actually like the macerators and the blend matic and all that stuff the way the way they are because they're animated so i don't use that one too much but say you're you had these battery buffers and one was sticking out somewhere weird and you just didn't want it to look like that you wanted to look more computerized there you go. It looks better now. Fantastic. Okay. That's awesome. Now, let's take a look at uh, the two other ones here. This is the drain, and this is the shutter. Now, these two are going to deal with machines that can uh, pump liquid in and out. So, we need to do something with, uh, say, a mixer. Now for this, I'm going to build this on the fly. Let me get all this stuff out of the way here. Let's, um, what do we got here? Let's do this. This is a machine hull. And yeah, we got our battery buffer. Okay, let's take our battery buffer and put a battery in it. And this is the high voltage one. We're going to need a bit, one of those. Let's put a battery in there. Good, it's powering up. Now we need a machine. Let's get an extractor, fluid extractor. Uh, we need the high voltage one. There we go. And let's go ahead and put that right there. Now I'm going to put some uranium in there. Okay. Putting the, uh, putting the uranium in there, I've now got molten uranium in my tank. The machine has an internal tank, so I've filled up about 3,600 uh, uh, millibuckets of molten uranium. Now, how do I get that out of there? What do I do with it? Well, let's go ahead and we're going to do a couple things today. Let's get a tank. Here we are. Let's get a tank here. We'll set that over there for a second. And let's get a pump. Now, I'm going to need the right size one. I'm using high voltage, so here's a pump. And I'm going to cover this later, but I'm going to put this pump cover on the side. And I'm going to use my screwdriver and configure that so it's extracting. Let's go ahead and turn that to export. Plain old export. And I need to put some tubes um, over to the pipe that I want to go to. I can use this, in this case I can use the smallest one, but I'll use the second smallest one. Here we are. And I'll put my, yeah, let's just put this up there. Up Come on. Up top. There we go. Now, all that molten um, uranium that was in there is now in this tank over here. And it doesn't matter the size of pipe. You can use Greg Tech pipes. You can use Buildcraft pipes. You can use any, basically, um, forge or dictionary type um, system that you know acknowledges the different liquids and so forth will work on there and that was just using a um, pump cover now those things have a lot of uses to them and we can do many different things with them I'm not going to cover it all day I'm just going to touch upon it 
All right. Now, let's go back to the one I really wanted to show you, which was the drain. And let me get rid of some of this other stuff. It's so easy. I think they need to, like, actually put more spots in here. Let me take that cover off. Let's get a drain. What could that drain be for? Well, the drain is pretty much what you would think it would be. It drains things. <laughs> It drains right into there. I need to do this. I need a machine that actually takes the water internal into it. Um, I think a mixer will do that. Let's get a mixer. And there we are. Let's get a mixer. It's all your imagination can handle. Now I'm going to make some concrete. I just happen to know this this will work, but to do concrete we need, I think, water. Okay, so I have to fill inside. It's got an internal tank, and I need to get some water in there. Now this is a cheap and dirty way to do this. I'm going to put block in here like this, and I'm going to need my screwdriver, I think. This one? Yeah, import. I just want to do it keeps liquids away, import, there we go. Now I need some water. Now here's the important part about a drain. This is not something you should do as a normal setup because it won't work. The drain, and this is why I'm demonstrating it, the drain only sucks up a source block. So say you had, um, and I better get another bucket here so I can clean this up. Okay. Let's say you had your water right there, and all this water is spl splashing out everywhere, right? Well, there's only one source block that's actually making water, the one that I placed right here against this block. And that can be true because once I get rid of it, all the water goes away. That's all this drain cares about. So, if it's receiving, say, some of the water that's clear out here, or, or water that's touching it that's a non-source block, it's not going to suck it up because it's not the source block. It only cares about the source block. So let me show you that. When I put this first one in here, we should see the water, the source block water, be sucked up into this machine. And there you go. It's gone. And now if I look in here, see that? It's got 1,000 millibucket in there. Sucked it up. But that's kind of a crappy setup, at least for using it with the mixer. There is some different things that you can use. Um, the drain for, and I'll get to that maybe if it ever comes up in another video, but if you ever want to suck up a source block where there's some place where a constant water source block is being created, that would be the solution for sucking it up. Now let me give you a demonstration of how it doesn't care about water that touches it that's not the source block. Okay, I'm going to set this one back here, and now look. Source block is back in this block, and it's got some flowage up to the thing. It's not sucking it up. And look, my amount of my water is still a thousand. It just doesn't care about non-source blocks. And that's how the drain works. And let me take that off. Okay. So um, I think the last one we have is our shutter. And to do that, I'm going to go ahead and down a mixer again. But this time, I think what I'm going to do is, hmm, I want to pump some water into there, and uh, I want to use, I'm going to use the uh, shutters. Actually, I'll show you with this one here. Okay, so I need to get water into this machine. And to do that, I can just go ahead and attach my machine right to it. And I could use a pump or actually I do need to use a pump. I'm going to have to put in a pump on the side. I could do that. I, actually, I don't want to do that. I want to use a shutter. We're doing a shutter. So I'm going to put a shutter on the side of the machine. And I'm going to set this to um, input. Only input allowed. So now only liquids can go in. It won't flow back out. Okay, and I showed this off in another video. And I want to put some water. 
Um, let me get that tank again and put that right here. And I'm going to put some water in there. Actually, let me get a different tank. Let me get the creative one. This will show it better. And that's right here. Put the t creative tank on top, and I've got it in a different mode. Okay, so now I just need to get my Omni Wrench. There we go. And once I click this with the Omni Wrench, the water is going to start flowing over to here. All right, and when we're going to fill this internal tank with water. So here we go. And you can see our mount is filling up uh, to the fullest. Uh, the internal water is 8,000. Okay, that's one use of the, the um, shutters. But what shutters do, and I demonstrated this in another video, you should see, um, and I'll put the link right here in the video, um, with fluid transportation and steam transportation. This works with no matter if it's steam or water. Water or liquids in Greg Tech pipes bounce back and forth like this. And you got to think of each piece of pipe in Greg Tech as a, as a mini tank. If I click on this and I look at the piece, it tells you right there. The fluid capacity for this pipe is 12,000 uh, uh, liters per second. Okay, that's how fast it and how much it can travel or how much can go through it. There's volume through it. So there are many tanks. <laughs> now, the, in this case, um, we're just going from here to here. But say I had another one of these machines right here. And I would put that on there. And say I would branch off here. And I would go over here. Now that water is filling up. Okay, normally if there was something pumping the water here, it would have to have a shutter right here at the neck and one right after it. In fact, I'm just going to go ahead and... Okay, that was server lag. Okay, so I'm going to demonstrate how I can use shutters here. Now if I put a shutter here, or if I didn't use shutters, the water would just bounce around in here like this. But if I take this out and I put a shutter here, here, and here, and I set them all. This first one, I'm only going to let it output. Only output is allowed. This one's only going to take input. And this one's only going to take input. Now I'm going to put a pipe in back in between. And now the water that's coming through here can only come out it can only go down there and it can only go through here. That way water isn't ricocheting around here. It's not ricocheting around in here because water sloshes in Greg Tech pipes. So that's why you would do that. <laughs> there we go. Okay, so if I look in here, oops. And you can see it's full of water. And we're ready to go. Okay, so okay, so that's why you would put the shutters in different ways. And you can actually make this look nice by using other covers. So say I got this one here, the stainless oops, stainless steel plate. Go ahead and put that on there you can cover it up nicely. I can actually make that look like a full box depending on which side the shutter is attached to. It's attached to this pipe over here, but if I would attach to this one, it could be a full box. So like say I put that there and I uh, put one there. And see so you can make it look like a full box. And it just depends on which side you put the shutter on in the covers. So pay attention to that doesn't really matter. There you go. And we'll put another one here. Make it all look nice and shh. All that good stuff. 
and you can get as fancy with it as you want it. The last thing I'm going to show you here is the fluid detector. Uh, and just like the item detector over there, the fluid detector puts out a redstone signal when, you guessed it, fluids are present, or vice versa, not present, depending on how you set it. So for this demonstration, I'm going to use pipes, and I've set up these two tanks here. And I'm going to go ahead and put uh, my fluid detector on that pipe. Now you can set it on the sides as well, and they can be removed with a crowbar just like any other cover. They can be configured with a screwdriver, and for this one, I'm going to set it to normal. But there are other um, ways you can use it by putting it in inverted mode. Like I said, if you don't, if you want to detect uh, for no presence of liquid, um, you put it on inverted or normal for detecting li when liquid is there. So I'm going to set a um, Project Red uh, redstone lamp on top, and I'm going to put some water in my tank. Now as soon as I turn this on, water is going to flow through here, and it's going to come over and fill this tank. When it's flowing, you're going to see uh, the light turn on. In fact, it won't turn back off because the water, it's not detecting whether the water is flowing, it's detecting whether there's water in this one section of pipe. It is not detecting if there's water in the other sections of pipe. For that, we would have to put on um, a detector on top of each one. In fact, let's just go ahead and do that. I'm going to set one on each one. And you'll be able to see the water start to flow across the pipe. Let's go ahead and set that. Now, as I turn this on, you'll start to see it go. Here we go. There we are. And the water now starts to fill our tank, which you can see at the top. Uh, it's actually starting to get some water in there. Now if I would turn this off, if this water actually goes into here all the way, once all these sections of pipe are empty, you're going to start to see those go out. Now I explained in my video, my previous video, why, the wa why these lights start to blink. That is because water sloshes around. So to fix that problem, I'm going to show you another demonstration really quick here, how to use your shutter. Uh, mod, or your, not your shutter mod, your shutter um, cover. There we go. Okay. And configure them. Output only. Set it all to output only. It really does matter how these are set up. It's very important. Okay, so let's try it again. This this time it's set correctly in the right direction. Turn it back on. The water flows across. Turn it back off. And see our water is still climbing. And now we will see those lights go out one by one. And it really made a difference on which side of the pipe you place those shutters, which direction. So there you have it, and they went out, no water bouncing back and forth. One more time. Turn it on, turn it off, and we can watch the water go out one at a time as the uh, sections of tube uh, empty out, and no bouncing across. Pretty cool. Okay, now that we've covered the basic covers, I want to cover the solar panel covers. It's important to note that by default, not all the solar panel covers will be available to you. You have to go in the configuration files um, and enable uh, the majority of them. The basic ones will be available, but the higher tiered ones are usually disabled by default. So just keep that in mind. Go into your config file and uh, make that change. Just enable it to true. Now that may change in future um, updates, but um, for now that's the way it is. Okay, so yeah, solar panels. You know, we all know uh, about solar power and I've hooked up these uh, voltage battery buffers down below 
And normally when we make a battery buffer, we have to have supply something uh, to it to charge up the batteries inside. So let's go ahead and take a look at, uh, I'm going to put this little small uh, tantalum uh, capacitor inside, which is the small battery for the low voltage battery buffer. Now this is uncharged. Well, normally I'd have to supply some power to this to get that to charge up. Well, not a problem. I can go ahead and just put the 8 volt solar panel cover on top and it will supply the block with power from the sun, which our construction people were kindly enough to put in a sunroof for our demonstration purposes into the lab, which is really nice. And when it's charging, we should see the light light up. Let's go ahead and try it out. Okay, so it's getting some light and it's charging and there it goes. It's charging the thing up. Pretty basic. And we don't have to just stick it on there either. We can stick the solar cover on any side of the block. It won't charge it any faster though. But depending on which way the sun is and how much sunlight there is, you know, the more solar panels you have on there, the more the chance that it will keep that charged. Now this works all the way up to, there's a solar panel cover for just about every tier of Greg Tech. Currently there are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 tiers of battery buffers. As of right now, the making of this video, I, there are only so many of the batteries that are created. All the batteries that go inside the buffers have not been invented by Greg yet. So what we do have, and this is and this is how this works, and I've done a battery buffer video, but I'll just touch on this really quickly. The eight, uh, the ultra low voltage has this one, the tantalum capacitor. I hope I'm pronouncing it right. The low voltage has a low voltage battery, medium voltage, high voltage. Now the high voltage can also use Industrial Crafts um, uh, energy crystal. The uh, extreme voltage does not have its own battery yet. However, it can use the um, Labatronic crystal from Industrial Craft. The same goes with the insane voltage battery buffer. There is no battery for this yet, but it uses um, currently the Industrial Craft uh, Lapatronic Energy Orb. So let's say I take a Lapatronic Energy Orb and I put it in here. Now if I put the um, Lapatronic Energy Orb in there, you can see it has no power to it. Now if I get the Insane Voltage Solar Panel and stick that on top, watch this. We're going to start seeing it power up. Pretty cool, huh? And so forth. Now, there are no other batteries that go in these yet except for the ZPM. The ZPM, though, however, uh, is a special situation, and I just want to touch on this one. There is no uh, uh, ZPM that can be recharged. The ZPM here is something that's only found, this, this is like a relic. It can only be found in loot chests and dungeons uh, and so forth throughout your world. It cannot be recharged. So putting a, um, a ZPM solar cover on top will not charge the device. As you can see here, it does not charge it. Okay. Um, so basically the ZPM solar panel cover right now is worthless. It does not do anything to charge the, um, the ZPM module. However, there are other machines that require ZPM power. So what you could do is you could put the ZPM um, solar panel on top of it on those machines um, because it doesn't matter if they're, they're whatever. They can go on the sides of machines or anything else or on top and um, and that would power that device. So it's not totally worthless as far as using it with other machines but it is totally worthless when you try to hook it to your battery buffer. will not charge the battery buffer. And then the ultra voltage 
um, there is no battery. It's still missing. We have no option here. And these other ones. So Greg says he's going to get something for us. Now, <clears throat> one last thing. There is a max tier level battery buffer. And I don't know really how to use this one yet as far as um, a battery buffer because there is no battery and there is no solar panel cover. So this one remains a little bit of a mystery how to use it and so forth. Um, I think that one, Greg is still using, that one's a work in progress. And then there's one more solar panel down here I want to touch on. This is just your basic solar panel, that's what it's called. And it is a cover. It only outputs one EUV at a time per click. So I can stick this, this one technically on any machine of any tier level, but it will only charge, it only trickle charge one EU or one volt at a time. So while it, it may seem slow, it, it can be worth it to be able to charge um, things and it's cheap to make. That one doesn't cost a lot to do. Let me put that in here. And you can see that we're actually charging um, or a little bit at a time. It's so slow in the charging that my light doesn't even register down below. <laughs> so that's how that one works. So that's, uh, that's basically it in a nutshell for the covers. Um, like I said, I'm going to get to, uh, I think I'll do the conveyors and the robot arm in a second installment and as well as I'll redo the pump because there is a lot more advanced usage for those. Basically what the robot arm does is it takes things out of the machine and places it into an adjacent slot of another machine and you can specify the slot number. Um, you have to understand how that works very specific and so it requires its own video to explain that all out. The conveyor, basically, it's a conveyor. <laughs> it basically just takes all items and adds a, it adds another input or output slot to the side of your machine. It's not a huge deal, and it can be configured with a screwdriver. The pump is for pumping items. But again, I have some more advanced setups that I want to do with that. So look for that video. Um, that will be um, probably coming out next week after I do this one. And um, if you like this video, or you have any follow-up questions, uh, or I didn't cover something, um, don't hit the dislike. <laughs> um, just ask in the, the comments and I'll explain it out, or if I don't know the answer, um, Greg is pretty good about getting back to me and he will answer the question directly and I'll just post it in the questions section. Um, so, uh, oh, and I have 500 viewers or subscribers now, so thank you, and um, please, um, do continue to share these videos and like and subscribe and uh, I'll keep doing what I do and um, I guess I will see you next time. Thank you very much.